Hey man, it's Dusty Wright. I'm with the Culture Catch, and today I'm in the subways of New York City. Right below me is the number six train, and to my left and to your right, Jeremiah Lockwood, throwing down some serious blues. Jeremiah, tell me, man, how did you get into the blues? Well, when I was a young fellow, I was listening to some records. What is it about something that makes you love it? You know, if you fall in love with someone, why do you fall in love with them? It resonates in your soul. Yeah, it, it told me some stories. I think, I mean, I'm sort of like, I'm always been interested in the old times, in the old world, and blues is a music that taps into that in a way which is both personal and inventive, and at the same time, deeply historical. And so that's a kind of, explanation I can give myself about it, but I can't really explain why, why I love the blues music so much, the old time blues music so much. Was there one particular song that you heard, like was it a record you heard from your parents' collection? Uh, yeah, my, my dad had two old blues records, and I sort of got into them at the same time. One was uh, Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues Singers, Volume 1, and the other was Mississippi John Hurt Today. And then uh, my brother, my older brother, had a friend who was into the blues, and he made this uh, mixtape for my brother that had Booker White and Fred McDowell and Doc Boggs and all these different guys on it. Now, see, for a cat that's only 27, that's serious because, you know, back in the 60s, mm -hmm. when my cousins were growing up and stuff, that's when the blues kind of hit the white urban market. Mm -hmm. You know, the early 60s, mid 60s, mm -hmm. and guys started to discover this stuff. And sure. the guitar guys or the you know, the heavy metal guitar heroes of the uh -huh. 60s and 70s went back to those records, you're name checking. But for somebody your age, that's pretty interesting that you weren't like into punk or something else. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, um, you know, I grew up, my father's a classical musician, and my, my grandfather is a cantor, a Jewish liturgical mus music, um, and um, so I, I wasn't coming from a background where I wanted to be listening to the kind of music that all of the other kids my age were into. And in fact, I definitely didn't want to. So, you know, finding blues was something that was my own, that wasn't my family's music, but at the same time was, you know, following my own idiosyncratic kind of path, you know. Uh, who do you think, like contemporary blues artists that are doing it, uh, guys who are still out there touring? Who do you who do you like? Uh, T Model Ford. You know, I mean, like the, uh, a few years ago, I would have said R.L. Burnside and Junior Kimbrough, but they're both dead now, yeah, which is unfortunate. Shame. But um, or Arthur Turner, who's one of my absolute heroes of all time of blues, who also unfortunately passed away recently. Uh, Robert Lockwood, still alive. Uh, not related to him, but. He's from Cleveland, name. man, and he, he did a lot of gigs. I saw him in Cleveland. Yeah, no, I... I and who did he know. play with? He played with Robert Johnson, of That's course. Right. Yeah. That's right. So, Henry Townsend is still living, uh, absolute, another hero of blues music. Uh, Honey Boy Edwards. And then, I mean, there are younger musicians who are really good also. I, mean, I just saw, uh, the other night, the Black Keys play. Uh, from my hometown of Akron, Ohio. Oh, yeah. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a good band. And, uh, well, it's the North Mississippi All-Stars.
Now I noticed uh, you play uh, in the uh, what we call the crawl style, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's three finger style. Three finger, and that's not easy to do. I mean, for guitar players who play, we know it, it requires a lot of practice. Oh sure. Well, that's all I like to do is play, play music. Are you a banjo player? Because that's a banjo technique. Uh, I'm the second. I play banjo second. I, I I didn't start playing banjo until pretty recently, but it's a very natural transfer from one to the other. I've made this record uh, last year, and it came out on a, a local label called Viron Records, and that's kind of been propelling me into kind of taking uh, my blues playing out of the subway in the street, where, which is the main place where I've been doing it for years and years, and into other venues. And I played recently, I opened for Robert Cray at, at, at uh, Irving Plaza. Well, for people who don't know, uh, you know, a lot of times when we're traveling the subways, there's this terrific series, the subway series, as you can see, the uh, sponsored by the MTA, and there's some amazing musicians down here, man. You know, I'm always blown away as a musician, fellow musician, like the level of professionalism and the commitment to the craft, sure? and you can just, I mean, you could end up missing your train, literally. I mean, I don't want to tell people, oh, coming down in the subway, like that's, that's, you know, it's a very, it's a certain path to take. I'd say it's sort of like choosing to become a priest or something. <laughs> uh, not with, not the celibacy part, but, you know, yeah. but I mean, I don't know, it's... Uh, commitment, you're talking. Commitment, commitment uh, austerity, you know, but joy also. You know, this crazy juxtaposition of, like, you know, being beloved by people and being totally scorned. So, I mean, it's great, I mean, I... I it's a meditative exercise. To, yeah, totally. And you learn a lot of stuff. Nice, nice. Well, thanks for being on the Culture Catch, man. We look for you in the clubs, all right? Hey, 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 I'm so glad to have met you, Dusty. Thanks, man.